Am I late? Am I late? Have you started? Am I late? Yeah, I think I'm late. You know, I hate it. I hate late people. I just hate late. I do. I just hate late. When my kids were little, I set all our clocks ahead five minutes, just hoping that I could get somewhere on time. And it didn't help. It didn't help. I, gosh, I hate being late. I hate late. I hate being in line at a light. I hate being in line at Safeway. I don't go to Costco because I don't like to stand in line. I just hate being late. I'm sorry that I was late. We're in a series called When God Doesn't Make Sense, and uh, I want to talk today about when God seems late. See what I've done here? (laughs) I mean, again, who hates waiting? I hate waiting. And I think there are often times when God doesn't make sense, and when we're waiting for God to do something, when you're praying about it, when you're believing God can do it, and you want him to do it, you know he can do it, and yet he's not doing it. I mean, it might be a financial challenge. It might be a job you need. It might be a medical issue. It it might be a relational issue. I just hate to wait. I've shared the story of my granddaughter, who is, we're finding out, probably battling muscular dystrophy. And it's been something that has been growing and increasing and we're recognizing it. And I've been praying since she first started to show signs. So I've been waiting a long time. I talked to a couple who've been trying to conceive and it's just not happening. The trying is fun. (laughs) (laughs) but the results are not. I know people who have been looking for a job that will be the right job, and it just doesn't seem to come. They're looking for a miracle in a relationship. We're waiting for a child to come back to Christ. We're waiting for some kind of a miracle, maybe in a physical situation. Why, God, are you making us wait? And here's a point I want you to take home with you today. With God, a waiting season is never a wasted season. Please remember that. I want to tell you a famous story, and there are several of them in our Bibles, of God being late. I remember early on asking this question and somebody saying, God's never late, but he's not very often early either, which wasn't a very good for me to hear. But this is a powerful story about two sisters and their brother, Lazarus. Uh, Many of you have heard this story talked about. But these uh, three were very, very close to Jesus. As a matter of fact, in Luke's gospel, there's a story of Jesus coming to their house for dinner. And Martha gets all wigged out because she's serving. And Mary's just sitting there chilling, listening to Jesus talk. And And the reality of that story and the reason that I bring it up is that you just need to know that Jesus was at their house for a nice homemade meal, probably stroganoff or lasagna or something really good. And he just loved it. And and they had this very tight relationship. So when tragedy came their way, they totally and completely expected to Jesus do what he had been doing they'd seen him do to strangers he was healing people he was delivering people he was doing the stuff so as we look at this story of Lazarus being raised from the dead in John chapter 11 and I'm going to bounce through it I'm going to put pieces of scripture but I'm more going to tell you the story because you might be one of those people right now like Amos Lee is singing Jesus could you help me now Jesus, could you help me now? I love that song. Jesus, could you help me now? So here's the story. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was, born, he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. So in other words, they're sitting there. They realize that Lazarus is just not sick. This isn't a cold. This isn't the flu that we've seen this, 
this uh, last season, but it was significant, and many got significantly sick this season. But they sent somebody to run to Jesus to tell him, hey, the one that you love is how they put it. The one you love is sick. So again, you recognize the intimacy of their relationship. Uh, they believe that if they send for Jesus, this is in the bag. Jesus is just going to respond. He's going to come. He's going to take care of this. You know, Jesus is in our life group is basically what they're saying. He's in our life group. I send for him. He's going to come just like this. This is going to happen. And yet they wait, and Jesus doesn't show up. And they wait another day, and Jesus doesn't show up. And they wait another day, and Jesus doesn't show up. And they wait another day, and Jesus doesn't show up. And we get that way with some of the things that we want. We believe. We have faith for this. And, 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 and I don't know if you get like I do, but I actually start to do a little inventory. I start, to, I start to list out the things for why Jesus should do it. You know, I tithe. I, I have a pretty regular devotional life. I've given my life to minister. I have lots of reasons why Jesus should show up. I have all of these things. But then for me, sadly, I also go to the, to the negative side of the ledger and I start to list all of the things that I know personally, not everybody knows, but I know personally the brokenness of my own life and I start listening to the reasons why he probably isn't. Respond. I start to do this little deal in my mind and my heart on why he wouldn't respond because of who I am. And again, remember this, with God, a waiting season is never a wasted season. For those of you that are waiting for something to happen right now, praying for something, believing for something, I want to challenge you to continue to have faith that God can and could do this. God could do this. I want to build your faith today. Because here's what I want you to understand. God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. Take that home with you today. God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. When he's not making sense, his delays are not necessarily denials. I want to say that over and over again. Because just because God hasn't done it yet doesn't mean that God is not going to do it. Just because he hasn't answered your prayer now doesn't mean that he's not going to answer your prayer. Here's what happened. They sent the runner to Jesus and it said, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness is not, will not end in death. And that is profound. It's almost like there's a new category for you to think about. And here it is. He says, it's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. In other words, I know what's going on. Do not think I don't know what's going on. Never think. Never think that he's not listening, he doesn't know. Don't let that lie invade your thinking and your heart. But what he's saying is you're going to see my purpose. You're going to see me. You're going to see me glorified. This is me. This is Jesus. I know this is something that you never wanted to happen, but I will be glorified through this. Remember that God's delays are not necessarily his denials. In fact, I would argue with you that sometimes it is actually a divine delay, a God-orchestrated delay. So in other words, God won't do what you want, and he's not doing it but he, because he just wants to flat deny you, but he has a different purpose in mind. And I will argue with you, if you want to, that God wants to do something in you before he wants to do something for you. He wants to do something in you before he wants to do something for you. That's why the delay. There's a purpose. It's kind of like we do with our kids. They ask us for something and we keep saying, no, no, it's not right yet. The time is not right. If I gave you everything that you asked for the moment you asked for it, you would be a spoiled, rotten brat. And I don't want to do that to you. I know in my own life in those waiting seasons, I can tell you that God has done a lot of things in me before he has done something for me. When I've been waiting on God, it's given me a chance for patience. I told you I do not like to wait. I'm at the very top of the chart when it comes to getting things done and wanting to get things done. So patience is not something that I have naturally. And he's caused me at times to deal with that. 
He teaches me to depend on him, to call on him. He teaches me to press in to him. God teaches me to walk by faith and not by sight because sometimes I don't see what I want to see. But I have to trust him anyway because I've decided to follow him. God teaches me to believe that his ways are higher than my ways. He's taught me to believe and to recognize that miracles are very oftentimes surprises, incredible surprises. He has a purpose even when I don't understand. God teaches me that when I'm weak, he is strong and that his strength is made perfect in me as I wait. So sometimes God wants to do something in you before he does something through you or for you. He wants to do something in you before he does something for you. And just because he hasn't done it doesn't mean he's not going to do it. God's delays are not his denials. Mary and Martha saying to Jesus, you got to come, you got to get here, you got to be here, you got to heal him. With God, this wasted season is never a a wasted season, this waiting season. So here's how the story goes. Lazarus fights for his last breath and dies. He just dies. And that had to be agony, agony for these sisters. Jesus is out healing uh, Roman soldiers, and, and, and they don't even like Roman soldiers. And, and he's out doing these things, and it's just not making sense. The one that he loves, he lets die. What are you doing, God? You just don't make sense to me. Why do I have to wait? So eventually, after a long, long wait, Jesus finally gets there. But by the time he gets there, you need to understand that to them, this is an insult. This is insultingly rude. You know, all the meals have been brought in. The, the body has been wrapped. He's been put into a tomb. And it says in this story, I'll read it to you in a second, that, that they had put him in the tomb and that he'd been in there for four days. So you got to recognize that he wasn't even there to comfort them. And they are probably angry. So here's how the story continues. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. It actually describes it this way. By this time, his body had a bad odor. And a lot of people, and I'm one of them, like to bring up the King James Version, which says, by this time, he stinketh. <laughs> so if you want to talk in King James language, just put a uth behind every other word, and you're there. He stinketh. And it's important... And this doesn't make sense to us that the four days is there because there was this crazy superstition in those, these days, Jesus' time, that there was a belief that for three days the spirit still hovered around the body and it could come back. So that, there was that belief. But there was also the understanding on the fourth day the body literally began to decompose. So that's when you were really dead. So if you're a Princess Bride fan like I am, he's not just mostly dead. He is absolutely dead dead. Four days, game's over. Jesus let me down. He failed us. He didn't even show up, and I don't get this. So Jesus starts coming, and here's how the story continues. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. So again, Martha was the one that got all wigged out. Mary's more of an introvert. She's sitting Still in the house, she doesn't come out, but Mary comes out, and I have this picture in my mind of her getting in front of him and just hands on the hips, fingers out. Where were you? What are you doing to me? Stomping hands on hips. And here's what she says. Martha said, to, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. What's going on? She's hurt. She's, she's a human being. I think she's ticked. I think she's angry. Didn't you get my text? <laughs> I mean, you got my text when you, I invited you to dinner and you actually showed up early. You ate all the stroganoff. You were early then. Where were you now? 
And, and I love the reality of this because we read again as I read the next verse. Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But this is probably the most important text in this text. It says, but I know even now, God, will give you whatever you ask. I know even now. And, and again, I love the reality, and I think we have to live in this. I have to live in this often. I'm living in this with my granddaughter. Why didn't you, when you could have, show up? I don't understand that, but I still trust you. I still believe that you can heal. My grandkids were with us over spring break, and little Emma is now 10 years old, and the dystrophy is ravaging her body, and I'm one of those awkward grandparents who, when my grandkids are with me, I pray for them, laying hands on them and pray for them, and I've fought how to pray for her. Because I don't want her to sense that she's different or broken. So this last week of prayers were just that God would strengthen her bones. Which in my mind means he would add significant muscle to them because the muscle is gone. And I don't get to tell him when to do this. But I know he can. Not happy about this. Don't understand this. But I still trust you. Jesus, if you'd been here, if you decided to work, you could work. But I love what the Bible says. You don't understand, but continue to trust me. You know, there are some of you here right now. And, and I just need to call it what it is. You're waiting for something to happen and it's not happening. It very much could be a physical situation that you would like to see changed. It could be that you've been praying for a financial situation and month after month it just keeps getting worse. It may be that you're fighting for your marriage to be better, but the more you fight and the more you cry out to Jesus, the worse the disconnect seems to be. You may be praying for somebody you love who you're praying for a miracle and you don't know why God doesn't. You kick back and you go, God, you're not meeting my expectations. I believe in you. I trust you. I worship you. I honor you. I serve you. Why aren't you doing what I've asked you to do? God, why aren't you meeting my expectations? Which is the next important thing that I would ask you to take home with you. If God always met your expectations, he'd never have the opportunity to exceed them. Let that sink in for a minute. If God always met your expectations, he would never have the opportunity to exceed them. In John chapter 11, and please go home and read this, there is no hope for Lazarus. He's dead, dead, four days dead. It's over. And it's like Jesus let us down. And yet Jesus says to Martha, your brother will rise again. In other words, with Jesus, everything can change in a moment, in an instant. Jesus says to her, your brother will rise. But she's confused. She doesn't get it. And she actually answers him, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So in other words, I believe one day, Jesus, that the trumpet of God will sound and the dead in Christ will rise to be called up together with him in the end. I believe that. I know that, Jesus. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You see, I'm going to be glorified through this. I'm going to do another thing. I've worked out another deal. You thought that what you wanted was best, but I have something even better for you. And what we need to understand Jesus is saying, yeah, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. But what you need to understand is I'm working a little illustration out here with your brother Lazarus. See, I, you thought the resurrection was going to be an event. You thought the resurrection was something that's going to happen uh, in the future. 
Yeah, I am the resurrection. With death no longer has the final say. Death is not the end of the game. When I die for your sins, uh, whenever you put your faith in me, even though your physical body dies, you will, you will not have to die. You, you can live with God forever in heaven because I am the resurrection and the life. But again, in this particular situation, if God always met your expectations, he would never have a chance to exceed them. So in this situation, Martha and Mary were expecting a healing. But Jesus planned a resurrection. What they wanted was good, but what he planned was far better. I don't know who it is. Somebody probably here today wanted something and you're praying for something. And if you got that something, it it would be as good as you could possibly imagine. But it's not what God has. It reminds me of a girl who was devastated because she wanted this boy to marry her. But he just didn't seem all that intrigued by the whole deal. And three years later, she found the right guy and married that guy. And she's really, really happy with that guy. And she looks back at the guy that she was devastated about and goes, thank you, Jesus. I mean, that happens in all kinds of ways. I, oh, if I could just get this job, and uh, eight months later, the whole place is closed down. If he gave you, gave you what you wanted, he wouldn't have the chance to exceed your expectations. Jesus said, no, I'm, I'm actually going to raise this one from the dead because I want you to know that I am the resurrection. I am the life. And whoever believes in me, though they die physically, yes, They die physically, but spiritually, they can expect that. So Jesus looks at them, and he says, roll away the stone. You guys have heard this, and then it says this. When he said this, he called out in a loud voice. Why do you think he called out in a loud voice? Because dead people don't hear very well. (laughs) Saw that one coming, didn't you? saying you're coming back to life and it says in this story he came out the dead man came out he came out not what they expected but he exceeded their expectations and I want you to understand that God's delays are not necessarily God's denials if you're in a waiting zone right now in a waiting season it's never a wasted season because God perhaps wants to do something in you before he does something for you because If God did everything that you expected, he'd never have the opportunity to exceed your expectations. He'd never have that opportunity. I had about the longest three hours of my year this last week. I was doing my devotional time in the morning. I was up all alone, and my wife's phone started to ring and annoyed the crap out of me. So I finally got up and answered, and it was my daughter. And I could tell she was crying. And she lost a baby a little over a year ago, and she's pregnant again. And I just knew where I know things, that something was going on, and she was afraid she was going to lose that baby. And that's what was happening. So I immediately prayed with her. I said, calm down, let's pray. And then I went and got Susie because she's better with words than I am. But I kept praying. That was before 7. And at 10.30, we got the news that there is a strong heartbeat and that baby is doing just fine. But can I tell you how long those three hours were? You feel me, don't you? Because we live this. 
So I want you to understand something. There's no guarantee with God. You know, you want the house with granite countertops and all those kinds of things. But there's just no guarantee. That's the American version of Christianity. All I can guarantee you that is whatever happens, God will be glorified through it. Because that's his promise. He will work all things to good to those who are called and give and receive his blessing. So God's delays are not always God's denials. God might want to do something in you before he does something for you. And if God always met your expectations, he would never have the opportunity to exceed them. Our God works everything to good. And when he doesn't make sense, I just want you to understand that to me is the absolute truth for those who follow him. Let me pray. Father, I give you thanks for this day. I give you thanks that you threw this story into the middle of our Bible so that we could begin to understand what it, what it feels like and what it is like when you seem to be late. Lord, my prayer for today is that again, I know that there are people sitting in this room who are desperately waiting for a loved one to come back, who are crying out for a loved one to be healed, who are desperate for their relationship to be better. Lord, that's just a few of the possibilities. Lord, bring comfort into this room today. And my prayer is, and I always feel like we have the right to say this to you, would you hurry up? Would you just take care of these things for us, please? Would you do the healing work that needs to be done? Would you restore the things that need to be restored? Would you provide the things that need to be provided? Would you do those things, I pray? Now, I give this opportunity every time we meet. We all do. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you've yet to say yes to this Jesus that we've just described through story and scripture this morning, um, you will not find life apart from him. You, You will never be satisfied outside of a relationship with him. And we just want you to know that and give you an opportunity to receive that. So heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you've never done that and want to do that, all I'm going to ask you to do is just lift your hand and say, that's me. I I want to start following Jesus today. I recognize what you're saying. I believe it to be true, and I want to start following Jesus today. Anybody at all? Okay. Yeah, see that hand back there. Yeah. Well, please, all of us, this is how we do life around here. We just do it together. Would you pray this prayer? This is a simple prayer that opens the door to Jesus' lordship over our lives. Uh, The Bible says we're born again. He's not interested in who we are. He gives us a whole new life. We get born again. So let's pray together, please. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I say yes to the resurrected life. I say yes to the new life. I say yes to being born again. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for healing. I ask for all you have for me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's applaud the Lord for the work he's doing.